This is the Porsche Taycan, an electric supercar. And today in this review, we're going to be diving into the engineering tech that makes it what it is. Welcome to another episode of The Future is Electric. Now the Taycan is the brand's first all-electric showroom vehicle, but it's not their first electric car. In fact, Ferdinand Porsche designed and built his first electric car way back in 1898. It's the car that gives Tesla a serious run for their money. I'm Luke, make sure you subscribe below. Today we're diving into the tech of the Porsche Taycan. Now the Porsche Taycan was the first production vehicle to introduce an 800 volt architecture. Now more volts means faster charging, better performance, and it means that the manufacturer can save weight on the cabling in the vehicle. Now there are different battery size options. However, that larger performance battery found in the Taycan Turbo S and the Taycan Turbo is a 33 module pack. Each module has 12 individual battery cells in the pouch format being supplied by LG Chem. They are NCM712 cells, first time we're seeing those on the channel. And together there are 396 individual battery cells in this vehicle for a total battery capacity of 93.4 kilowatt hour. Now, of course, the battery is being cooled. It is being both cooled and heated, actually, by having the battery on the same cooling circuit of the entire vehicle, which is functioning through a heat pump. Now, usually I tell you that the ideal temperature for batteries is around 25 degrees, but Porsche take this a step further. They are heating or cooling the battery to a different temperature based on the state of charge and the current driving mode selected in the vehicle. Now, depending on the model of car chosen for this vehicle, the range will vary. So it varies from around 371 kilometers WLTP up to 506 kilometers, again, WLTP. Now that's impressive considering that this is a car geared for performance rather than efficiency. Now, as we saw in the Hyundai Ionic review, this is also an 800 volt architecture, as we've mentioned. Now that is a huge impact on the charging time. In fact, on a DC rapid charging station, this car can charge at a power of up to 270 kilowatts. That's pretty fast. That can charge this large battery in just 25 minutes, drawing the same amount of power as 270 washing machines. Now comfort is a priority at Porsche and what they have not one but two charging ports on either side of the vehicle. You have an 11 kilowatt AC charger on the left and on the right and a DC fast charger just on one side. That 11 kilowatt charger can also be upgraded to, an, to a 22 kilowatt charger. Now each electric motor is able to function as a generator. So the second the car is moving and you've lifted your foot off the accelerator, the wheels are still turning, but now they are generating the power, which is thus being fed back into the battery. And Porsche have advanced this technology quite a bit. In fact, that region, the car can charge at a rate of 290 kilowatts. In fact, the, the Taycan owes up to 30% of its range to regeneration, which is above the industry's 20%. Now there's no one pedal driving in the Taycan, a design decision taken deliberately. This is an electric supercar after all. The last thing you want is that the car starts to slow down once you lift your foot off the accelerator. Now let me tell you, if you are courageous enough to floor the accelerator pedal in the highest end spec Porsche Taycan, you will experience 12,000 reasons as to why you should have placed your head firmly against the headrest. The car delivers 12,000 newton meters of torque to all four wheels simultaneously. Within 2.4 seconds, you're doing 100 kilometers per hour, which is faster than Hamilton on a Sunday afternoon. 
Now Porsche makes use of permanently excited synchronous motors, PSMs, which is different from the asynchronous electric motors we generally see on the channel. Of course, these motors are more expensive, but they deliver a greater punch. They are made out of more rare earth materials than your standard motor. However, this allows them to heat up less than traditional motors and thus they can be run at high speeds consistently. In fact, these electric motors in the Porsche Taycan can run at a consistent 16,000 revolutions per minute. And the car will thus achieve a top speed of, wait for it, 260 kilometers per hour. Now, these electric motors by Porsche use a hairpin winding technology. So what does that all mean? So in your typical electric motor, your copper reel is, is spun from a, an endless reel. In this case, that copper reel is cut from individual segments bent into a U-shape. Those are placed next to each other and then welded together. That allows for a better fill factor, a more dense copper winding. And that more dense copper winding means better performance and better torque. In fact, they have a fill factor of 70% whereas usually you get 50% fill factor in the normal method. Now this is one of the few electric cars which does actually have a gearbox of sorts. It is actually a two-speed transmission vehicle and it's what's going to allow the vehicle, when it's say traveling at 200 kilometers per hour, to give you even more juice once you stamp on the accelerator. So there's a two-speed transmission in this car. Now, the Taycan isn't your average electric car. The Taycan is an electric supercar. And the Germans have achieved some engineering marvels to put it together. I'd like to give a shout out to Peter for helping out with all the technical today. You, the viewer, for liking this video if you've learned something new. As always, I hope I've convinced you that even in the supercar realm, the future is electric. <laughs>